Hey guys, I made a tabletop simulator mod for the game Dogs of War, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the scripts for that mod. So I call this mod Dags of War, but it's actually a rethemed, scripted, and slightly customized version of Dogs of War, which came out in 2014 and was designed by Paolo Mori. The illustrates that you'll find in this mod were created by Nikita Orlov, and the board art was created with the help of assets by Ross McConnell. Now I did the graphic design for everything, so there are some slight changes left and right. I think the biggest change with the original game is that instead of using tokens, I'm using cards for victory points and for influence. And I'm also using player boards that look like this. So on your player board, you can put your loot, which are victory points and cards that you acquire during the game. Um, you can put the coins that you get here, and then there's space for your character card, which will give you a special ability. Finally, up here, you can put your captain tokens, which will look like this, depending on what your character is. In the original game, those are actually pretty nice miniatures, but they also obscure the board a little bit, so I went with tokens instead. So anyways, I'm not going to explain the entire game for you guys, but the general idea of the game is that you're going to have these kennels, which look like so, that are going to battle each other um, on these areas of the board. Now, you are not actually battling for the kennels, but you will um, attribute soldiers to every kennel. So these are the soldier cards, and as you bring those in, you will sway the battle in the favor of specific kennels. Now, because all players are doing this at the same time, it can be hard to predict where a kennel is actually gonna go and which kennels are gonna be winning. But the influence cards that you'll hold in your hand, which look like these, example is this influence with the herd, those are worth whatever the kennel is worth at the end of the game. So there will be the scoreboard up here, and you see the candles here as well. And for example, the app cartel, which is the green candle here, is now worth minus one point. So every influence card that I have with them will be worth minus one. But if I can bring this up higher, like say at six, now every influence card that I get from them will be worth six victory points at the end of the game. And whoever has the most victory points will win the game. And that's the general idea behind Dogs of War. You have these candles that will be battling each other, and you as the Lord, War, as the Lord of War will be putting your mercenaries into these armies. So anyways, what is the mod doing here that makes it super cool? Well, there is this console up here. You can open it up here, toggle the controls, and you'll see that there's a bunch of options that you can make. Um, so you can choose if you want to have special characters. So if you have the original game, it will come with the five base characters that look slightly different from the ones in here, but these five are pretty much exactly the same. Then the game had an expansion, which is represented by these four characters. And then finally, there are three characters that I made based off of some ideas that I found on Board Game Geek. If you're using my script to set up, and you don't have to, but if you're using that script, you can use these buttons to either enable the expansion characters or disable them, and the same applies to the custom characters. Now, you don't have to use the script. You can just grab these characters out and you can just start putting them in here. But if you don't use the script, you are gonna to have to follow the rules because there's gonna be a bunch of rules that the script will do for you automatically that will no longer happen if you're not using it. So in the case of you using your own characters, you wanna keep in mind that you also have to adjust the influence cards up here. You'll have to take out some cards or add some cards depending on the player count. Anyways, if you are using the script, you can just come down here and you can click on setup characters and influence cards and everything will happen automatically for you. Now, at this point, you're still welcome to make changes. For example, if you say like, I don't wanna play with Aurelia the Cunning, I would rather play with somebody else. So let's get somebody else here. I'm gonna click here and search. And um, like, yeah, I would like this card instead. You can just drag Aurelia back in here, swap them up, no harm done. So you can get a random selection of uh, characters this way. And then when you're done and everybody is set, you can click the next button, which will deal the starting cards. So when we click that, you'll see that now everybody has a hand of cards, two tactic cards and one influence card. And actually it's a two influence card. So everybody at the start of the game will get a two influence card. And at this point, this is worth minus two victory points because the athletic assembly right here is at minus one. So ideally we wanna bring this up by having the athletic assembly win battles. So how do we get to that point? Well, the next step is we wanna set up our battle. So we can click on the battle setup button and it'll take care of everything. 
and it'll put battle cards in here it'll put the kennels out there and we can find our athletic assembly up here so these are the ones that we want to kind of help and yeah that's pretty much the entire setup now um, the buttons get um, closed off right now because you don't really need them but there are two options that i quickly want to point out here you can set the victory points that you need to win a battle so if you want um, a battle to be won at 10 points you set it like so and if you want it at 12 points you set it like so and you can see here as i'm clicking this that the board changes with that to indicate the amount of uh, the amount of points that you need to win a battle then there's a decisive fort i'll get back to that later when i've shown you how this works but the decisive fort is a really good option it makes the game more suspenseful towards the end so anyways let's get rid of this again and you know typically the way the game works is you'll put your captains out on certain card um, icons and you'll get special um, abilities for that or you'll get special rewards for that rather and usually at some point in the game you will use your coins which look like these adorable paws to buy these soldier cards and they'll go into your hand but in this case i just want to show off the mod so let's say i want to play a cavalry down here we'll see that the battle tracker now has moved because you don't as long as you have that setting on you don't have to mess with that whatsoever and um you know this has been play tested extensively so this should work but if you find any errors just let me know in the comments of the mod if I go back to toggle controls, I can turn that option off using this setting, but I like playing with it. It works well for me. So anyways, let's say that we are battling here quite a bit and I'm just going to put these on random cards and I'm going to try to put them in spots that would make sense to some extent. Um, I'll put some random cards out in a second too. So here we go dragging them all over and let's put some big cards up here there we go and now let's do the ones at the top and there's something i want to point here out here as well but let me do these guys first so all right now some of these have special abilities and the mod takes all special abilities into account as well so i'll demonstrate one in a second but first i'm gonna move this around like so so that there are some soldier cards everywhere and then this guy here isho saito or oshu saito i'm probably butchering that but the special ability for this character is that they get to move the tracker of battles in which they fight up to two spaces in their favor so the way that works is whenever you put a captain down that battle tracker needs to adjust so this is what's happening right now and it'll tell you review the ability just in case um something strange is happening here and you weren't expecting this it'll only tell you that the first time you're using it but yeah the battle tracker will update accordingly with the character abilities including this one all right so um a final thing that i want to point out as well is if you want to play tactic cards let's see which tactic cards i got well i just got some rest so those are not useful for me right now but let's say i want to grab um a renegade would be great so let's see where is a renegade um yeah, you can't really search for them because I didn't put the names in there. Um, here, here's a Renegade card. And then maybe a Rush would be nice too. So where is a Rush? It's a bluish card. Here we go. All right, so these are two tactic cards that should also influence the battle tracker. So let me show you how that works. So let's say as the red player, I have a Rush and I have a Renegade ability. So a Rush allows me to um, ignore the reward listed on a battle card and advance three plus spaces on the battle tracker. So this will just give me a plus three whenever I use it. So how does that work? Well, um, usually you have to play um, a soldier card. So let's say I play a Corgi and then you just play your rush on there as if it's a soldier card. The game will know what to do. It will clean up everything properly. It's all programmed. Then the Renegade card. Um, wait, oh, it wasn't the Renegade. I am looking for the wrong card here. Let me see which is the one that I was actually using. not a renegade so reinforce that's what i was looking for yeah in renaming these cards i kind of had a lot of cards with an r so anyways um so reinforce means that you have to play on the losing side of the battle and then you get a plus two so if i were to put this guy here i get an error message because i need to play it on the losing side of the battle and then it'll work just fine so the battle trackers will adjust based on tactic cards as well so that's pretty cool 
It's a neat feature. Now say we've played this battle and this is what it looks like. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to resolve the battles and depending on who won, like for example, the Terrier tribe is going to win this one. So this marker needs to go up. Now you can do that manually, but if you don't want to do it manually, you can just click on resolve battle and it will even do everything for you. So you'll see here what the script saw um, and you can verify everything. Like for example, the Terrier tribe should have won with nine points because it says minus nine here and that's what happens. So this is great. If anybody's like, hey, wait a minute, I don't think I got what I was supposed to get because, um, you know, for winning this battle, um, there were two influence cards for Terrier Tribe going to the red player and one victory point. So that's what happened. If you feel that something's wrong, you can just look at the log and everything will be there. So even if the script for some weird reason breaks down, you still have all this so your game isn't lost. Um, and this has got updated now and that's exactly how we want to see it. Um, the treats will get um, distributed as well. So that's what they look like. So this one will give you a cavalry. This one will give you three victory points. That will happen as well. And once you've verified everything, you can go to the next phase, which is um, battle cleanup. So at this point, you want to clean up. Now, the only thing that you want to take into account, now I don't think any, yeah, I didn't put enough of the markers out. But say that you had a captain because some of these like this marker here, like say this guy went here, they would have gotten a captain according to the rules. So that would mean that um, they would get a captain. You want to put that captain at the sixth spot of the board. So it is this one here, the one that's marked with a little bone. It's in the summary. You put him there because then he won't be taken away in the cleanup. So when I click this button, this guy goes away and any remaining ones would go away. And then you can just put him here so that he doesn't stay there forever. Um, or actually, you want to wait with that until you do your battle setup. <laughs> so anyways, um, we cleaned up. We can set up our battle again. Um, now, the one thing that I should have probably done, so let's clean up again, <laughs> is I should have advanced the year marker because now we're in year two and there's slightly different rules because I should get four captains instead of three. And now you can bring the extra captain out and we're ready to keep the battle going. So that's how you play um, this mod. It's a lot going on behind the screens. It's actually about 3000 lines of code. So this was a ton of work, but you can play this game that I really like pretty quickly now. Um, and yeah, I hope you will enjoy it. Thanks so much for watching this and bye-bye.